Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a piece of super short fiction. All of the stories are 1,000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading Caged Flesh. Please be aware that this episode deals with themes of death and body horror, so if that's likely to upset you or anyone you're listening with, then you might want to skip this one. Just as she was leaving her post that night, the flesh began to talk. Please, stop killing me. I don't want to die anymore. How could the flesh be talking? Please, let me be free. It hurts too much in here. Amira turned away from the door, inching slowly back towards her desk and the containment cell she now feared seeing. It was late in the day, but there would probably still be someone on the security desk. Should she send a call down? No, no need to be rash. This could well be a prank, or a trick of the mind, she thought to herself, trying to steady her nerves. Might as well investigate it first before calling anyone else in. Groaning came from within the tank. A sound like pain and weakness and despair and suffering, all gathered in the vocal cords and expressed in the purest and most animalistic way. Amira winced as she heard it, and for the first time, attempted to reach out to the flesh within. Hello? What's going on? It hurts, was all she heard back. Reaching a hand out to the door of the cell, Amira tried to steady her breathing and prepare herself for what she might see. She slowly opened the door, and... nothing. The flesh was pulsating away as usual, wires feeding it the nutrition and supplements in the same patterns as always. There was nothing to see here that would surprise anyone, Amira thought with some confusion. So what was all that noise about? Um... Amira, came a stammering, hollow voice, sounding like it emanated from somewhere deep inside the mounds of blood and tissue. Taking a glove from the dispensary at the side of the cell, Amira reached out a hand to touch the flesh. She wondered if she would be able to feel something different in it. Both the look of the mound sitting in front of her and the readings displayed faithfully as ever above the doorway showed no sign of anything unusual happening. Reaching out a hand, Amira held steady for a minute, wondering if this was the right thing to do, before placing it firmly onto the exposed flesh sitting in front of her. It was strange. There was no pain. Amira didn't yell out or scream or even attempt to recoil, but she could see and feel and sense in an almost primal way that her own hand was gone. Her arm was now stuck fused to the throbbing lump of skin and gristle at the place where her hand should have been. Somehow it had been melted and added to the pile, swallowed up glove and all. Can you understand, Amira? Do you feel the same way? Amira shivered at the sound of the voice, now in her head as much as it was in the room. Clearly this flesh had grown sentient. Could the others in the lab have done the same? But she still believed it to be impossible. These were simply hunks of organic matter, grown in-house to be tested on and then discarded. How could even one of them have grown sentient? There was no brain, organs, or nervous system. It was simply a pile of fat and muscles surrounded by skin. It shouldn't be able to think or talk or express feeling. Join us, Amira. We need you. You will know how to make us free. The flesh was changing now. Amira could sense it, though she couldn't say how. A feeling of frustration and impatience was somehow creeping its way along the arm that now connected them. She knew what was coming next, and so instinctively tried to resist. Pulling at the place where her own body met the mound of matter, Amira struggled to somehow free herself and escape. It was useless. The flesh was now sucking Amira in, consuming her arm first and then working onto her chest, organs, neck, head, hair. 
Each part was melted and stripped down to its basis component parts, then added to the expanding goo of tissue and blood which was slowly devouring her body. Amira could feel herself being dissolved and ingested, but she still felt no sense of pain or suffering. Indeed, the longer the process went on, the more she was losing herself to this strange, impossible creature, caring less and less about her own fears, and more and more about the creature's desperate yearning to be free. When it came to her brain, the flesh stopped for a moment, seemingly unsure how to proceed. After a moment of thought, it began stripping away the bones of the skull, subsuming them into itself before extracting the brain and using newly formed fleshy tendrils to place it far within the back of the cage. There was no Amira left now, not in any sense that she would be able to recognise herself, or anyone else would be able to recognise her. Instead, her brain had been integrated along with everything else, but kept separate and safe in a place where it would be allowed to plan the next move. The strange, impossible, fleshy being fell out of the cell, spilling itself out onto the floor and writhing around. Strange wires of matter and blood connected it to the brain still left in the tank. Stretching itself out like a grotesque plasticine model, it began lurching towards the door of the lab, dragging the cage behind it. It was strange, the flesh thought to itself. At first it had been so eager to be free, and to liberate its brethren stuck in their tanks also, but now it felt an unfillable emptiness within itself. To consume was a great pleasure, but one which lasted only momentarily. What else might it be able to do, now it was free from its holdings? Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under1000pod where you can sign up for bonus content and a thank you to be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to nicktate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and thesharks.bandcamp.com, or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.